if I go and make Bob Ross style paintings and having never seen the one where he makes a purple alien landscape, uh, I happen to make a purple alien landscape that looks identical to Bob Ross's, but I actually never, in, in actual fact, never saw the Bob Ross you know, purple alien landscape painting, which I, I believe, I don't, I don't believe there is a purple alien landscape painting. That's why I'm choosing it as a hypothetical. Then it would be fine. It would be a, no copyright infringement. And although everyone could accuse everyone of copyright infringement, it wouldn't be copyright infringement. This is a community supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So what's going on with Michael Swain, Swaim and Swaim Corp? Could someone please explain this to me? He's from Cracked, right? Is that what I'm hearing? He's an author who used to write for Cracked. Is that the guy who said that he deleted his tweets for defamation? Yes, yeah. yes. Which okay. might might have been the right thing to do if he really is truly unprepared for a lawsuit and, and if he had even slightly overstepped with his claims of copyright infringement and theft and all that, um, maybe that would turn into an Oberlin College style defamation lawsuit or something. So he's he's right to back off if he's unprepared to defend himself from those claims. Okay, so the story is that he wrote a script and he he wrote it sort of on behalf of a of a company. The company ended up going with a very similar script that was written after um, he had written his script. Okay. So it had the sa same sort of like tagline slash description of the yeah. movie. And, so um, the question is, is it so script. substantially similar that a jury would agree it's copyright infringement? Um, or is it only similar in like Senna Fair and, and other unprotectable elements and otherwise they made enough changes to it? But but otherwise, did they, did they make a similar work? They made a similar work. I'm not going to say So that we're not was... saying it's illegally similar. We're just saying they may, they may bad... have made a similar work. I think it's a a business practice like for this company where when they get fun ideas from from authors like instead of paying the writers um for their good idea they then turn to other writers and say can you write something similar to this and then pay less than what they would have paid the original writers so okay you know when like after Anaconda came out, there were a bunch of like snakes eating everybody movies that would come out that would be like straight to to movie. And it's not like they copied Anaconda, but they copied the concept. So they made like a similar movie in the same vein to try to capture the people who liked the movie Anaconda. I think it's I think it's more similar to that. So it's not so it's more like a bad business practice. It's more like a, a dealing in bad faith with people rather than copyright. It's my not super informed understanding. Okay, so he has a tweet here now since because he's had to delete some. So here's what yeah. uh, what's left. Let it be known that Emmett and Furla Oasis EFF Films have had a film called Force of Nature in production for over a year independently of a similarly titled script we submitted to them on spec and they never read. This is a legally established fact. So uh, I don't know. Does if if they never read it? Because okay, so let's let's remember here. What is copyright infringement? It's access plus substantial similarity, or at least that's one one of the versions of copyright infringement. Either actual copying, which is called per se copyright infringement, or access plus substantial similarity. So not only does it have to be substantially similar, but you have to have access. So if they're saying they never actually read the script. And if that's fact, if that's actually true and not a giant lie, I, I can't tell. I'm not. I'm. I'm not even speculating here. I really don't know. But hypothetically speaking, if that was not a giant lie, then no copyright infringement. You can. Two people can come to make the exact same work, and it's not copyright infringement as long as they didn't copy from one another, or one didn't copy from the other, illegally. So, like, uh, if I go and make. Bob Ross style paintings 
and having never seen the one where he makes a purple alien landscape, uh, I happen to make a purple alien landscape that looks identical to Bob Ross's, but I actually never, in, in actual fact, never saw the Bob Ross you know, purple alien landscape painting, which I, I believe, I don't, I don't believe there is a purple alien landscape painting. That's why I'm choosing it as a hypothetical. Um, then it would be fine. It would be a, no copyright infringement. And although everyone could accuse everyone of copyright infringement, it wouldn't be copyright infringement. If uh, he is accusing them of theft and stealing because they created a, a similar work with access or a substantially similar work without access, then he might be still overstepping because that's not technically theft or infringement. And even then, I still like to make the distinction that infringement is infringement. Stealing is stealing, theft is theft. Infringement is not exactly equal to theft or stealing. It is very close to it in some cases, and in many cases it feels like stealing and, and is akin to stealing. So let's not be, let's not mince words about how close it is, but it is also different so I really think it should get its own definition and, and be called infringement. And, and when, you, when you refer to copyright theft, it is copyright infringement, not you've stolen my item, rather you've infringed on my copyright. I think, I mean, I, that's, what I, that's what I think. But uh, so, so that's what's going on with Mr. Swaim. Now he's, he's somebody, right? He's from Cracked, right? Is that what I'm hearing? He's an author who used to write for Cracked. So he's a funny guy. And uh, yeah. very, very popular, apparently, because I've been getting lots of requests to cover this. In my mind, it's like morally, it's it's wrong to to tell people, OK, write this great script. They submit the script and they go, oh, we didn't read your script. Instead, we went with these other people mm -hmm. um, and paid them less than we would have paid you. Uh, and they, you know, came up with something very, very similar. Or we told them to come up with something very, very similar. Um, morally, that's kind of douchey i don't know if legally it's wrong but it's definitely oh not yeah for authors yeah are you wrong for being upset about it no i don't think anybody's wrong for being upset about it but i think i think the pushback then since he had to delete those tweets the pushback was you know you called it theft and maybe you shouldn't have called it theft or or maybe you got the facts wrong michael swaim is an actor and writing writer known for uh, this 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 commercial of a uh, milk bottle. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They just put that up on the screen. Um, off hours, B-roll, family meeting, Disney owns you. After hours, Galactic War Room, Cracked Studios for at least five, six episodes. Rom.com, Antiheroes, Adventures in Jedi School, Welcome Back Potter. How the government would actually test superheroes. F Batman. So agents of cracked. So he is. He has lots of lots of credits. Guy is the real deal. So if he's saying that someone you know did something immoral or unethical, I think he's got the absolute right to to cry foul for that behavior. If he then says that they've stolen or, or or whatever his work, it had better be actual copyright infringement or actual theft and not mm -hmm. just the moral or unethical, you know, opinion, which I agree, but but let's let's all be clear here, humans have different perspectives on morality and ethics and all that. And what we really care about in the law is whether someone has breached an actual ethical or professional duty, which is also akin to a law or an actual black letter law. And we don't see that here until we see facts that someone copied, actually copied his material directly or had access to it and made a substantially similar work. If there wasn't a substantially similar work made, or there wasn't access, then there's no copyright infringement. And now I'm 10 minutes less prepared for my actual show. <laughs> oh, that was fun though. Hey, good morning, everybody. Physicist and David and Dustin and Blackleaf and Snorri Wizatsky. So that is our show for today. I, of course, am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses with me, Leonard French. 
Thank you very much to our Patreon and sponsors and other supporters. In July, we have a $500 plus supporter, Joshua Davis with Tanda Pay. We're working on a video for him about his social insurance program that's based on blockchain technology. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Michael Pierce, Richard Fortier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, and Snorri Wazatsky. <laughs> and thank you to you. our $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me. And everyone will appear in the description below. So thank you all for joining me. I'll leave some room for, we, we, we now have a dog pool party video of Nico in a shark life jacket. It's got like a little shark fin on the back of it. So we'll post that with the end of, with, in the outro of the videos. Love you all. Have a great Wednesday and a great rest of your week. We'll see you in the videos that drop and on Sundays at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash lawful masses. And I guess now Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, same place. Love you all. This has been Kaylee in the real studio and then Tactical and Brandon in the virtual studio. Thank you much for joining me. Everybody. Do you remember hey, our first touch? All right. Look like at you that. now, an adrenaline rush. Oh, no, no, this is, this is, uh, Kaylee's lobster bib.